Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Gospel Guitar Lesson Part 8. Today we're going to be taking a look at some uh, open triads. And if you don't know what open triads are, basically they're a standard triad, but we move the middle note up or down an octave, and it gives us a lot more air in the voicing and a lot more space between the notes, um, and it just sounds absolutely awesome. So they're really, really usable. Uh, Eric Johnson is one player that probably everybody knows that uses uh, these open these open triads or these open voicings a lot, open three note voicings, um, and it gives them and he uses them actually not just for chordal playing but a lot of times in his soloing as well. He'll go through some open voicings, um, sending up the neck and stuff like that. And uh, Tim Miller is another really uh, incredible player that comes to mind that uses these really frequently as well. Um, and they just sound awesome. They're really, really usable. Again, they're only three, uh, three note voicing, so there's not a ton going on, which is perfect if you're in like a band situation and don't have, you know, a lot of space to take up. Um, so they're just really usable and they sound great when we mix them up with our, uh, our closed triads that we've been working with, um, the past two weeks, I think. So anyway, let's take a look at how we first build, um, the actual chords. And the theoretical knowledge behind how we build these isn't as, like, as important to me. I will go over it, but really what's nice about these is the actual shape takes up four strings. So there's really only um, three main shapes and then they're inversions. So there's not as much as to memorize with these actual shapes. So you can get, um, you know, you can start using them in your playing a little bit faster than you would other chords because there just isn't as much to memorize with these actual shapes. So let's take a look, um, we'll stay around the third fret area for today, so let's just take a look first of all at uh, basically just an F major triad, just a uh, closed triad. So it's going to be um, just what we've been working with the uh, past couple weeks, so it's going to be uh, three of the D, two of the G, one of the B. Okay, and there's our F major uh, triad. Okay, now the idea behind this is that we're just going to basically take the middle note and we're just going to bring that up uh, one octave. So the middle note is an A, so we're going to bring it up to this A right here. And then we have our open voicing. Now, um, we can do that with all the inversions as well. Um, so like, uh, first inversion, okay, the middle note is going to be C, and we're going to bring that up an octave. And we end up with our open voice and again, same thing with second inversion. Um, now, one thing that I do with this is going back to the first shape here. I don't keep the shape that way. It's a little more awkward for me to play it like that. So all that I do is take this uh, C note, basically, and I move it um, to the G. Okay, so then I have three of the D, five of the G, and then five of the high E with my pointer, ring, and then pinky. Okay, and that is my shape for all of the inversions. All the root position chords, that is going to be my shape right there. So it's going to be two adjacent strings, a skip string, okay? So a skip string here, which is the B string, and then our high E string. So that is basically uh, my shape that I'm always working with. Now, what's cool about this is the shape, let's move it um, now so the root note is on the A string. The shape stays exactly the same. Now we have a C major uh, open triad. Okay? So the shapes stay exactly the same, which is obviously really, really convenient. Move that down to a B flat up to an E flat major, and then to an F major. Okay, so here's C. Now let's go down, or excuse me, up now to the uh, low E. Okay, now the only thing that changes about the shape when we move it to the low E, so our first note is on the low E, is that um, our pinky, the note our pinky is playing, is just going to move down, or I should say the highest note in the chord is always just going to move down one fret towards the headstock. So here we had C. Okay, the highest note is E. So now let's move that to a G major open triad. Okay, whatever note was the highest note, move it down one fret. And there we have our major triad with the lowest note being on the low E string. Okay, 
So again, we have F. Shape stays the same. Move it to C. And then the shape is going to change slightly. Just the top note moves down one fret. Okay. Now what's really convenient about these is the third is on top when we're in um, root position. So the third is on top for all these. So if we want minor, the top note, we just move it down one fret. So here we have F minor. Here we have C minor. Same shape once again. Okay, and then same idea when we move it with the lowest note being on the low E. We're just going to take whatever note is the highest note, move it down one fret. So here it was G major. Now it's going to be G minor. And now I am playing it with my pointer, pinky, skip string, and then middle finger. Okay, so there would be our minor triads. Okay, so cool, really nice sound to those, and um, I'd recommend taking those through a couple different progressions. Um, you know, one that you could try out that I think sounds really nice is G, B minor to C. Okay, now we're going to go E minor. Okay, D major. C major, B flat major, okay then we're going to go F major, then back up to home base uh, for the G major. Okay, so that's kind of a nice little progression you can just experiment around with. Um, but yeah, there is kind of our major and minor triads um, just in root. Uh, position. Now let's take a look at them through uh, their, the rest of their inversions, which there's really only um, four more shapes that we have to look at for the inversions, because again, um, if you look at it, these first two shapes are exactly the same, whether the root note is on the D or the A. Uh, it's exactly the same, and it is for the inversions. The only shape that's different is on when our lowest note is on the low E. So that really cuts down on our shapes to memorize. Um, so yeah, let's go through the inversion shapes. We'll take a look at those. All right, guys, so for these inversions, I should mention that um, I have fairly big hands, so I can grab some of these inversions a little bit easier um, just because my stretch is a little bit bigger than uh, the average, the average uh, person's hand would be. But um, the reason that some of these end up being a little bit uh, bigger of a stretch is because I like to keep... Um, the same layout all the way up the fretboard and I like to do this for a lot of things just so it's easier to visualize um, especially when I'm playing faster tempos and stuff so what I mean by this is I always like to keep two adjacent strings a skip string um, and then the last note so like what we had started with when we first did our very first open triad was basically this right here and this was one note, skip string, and then two notes. Now that obviously is a changed um, shape as compared to two notes, skip string, and then one note. Um, so I just like to keep all my inversions, all my root position chords to adjacent, two adjacent notes, skip string, and then a high note. I'll show you how to move these around um, if we should encounter, you know, like really big stretches that I think you guys might want to change the shape a little bit. So starting from F, here is our root position. Okay, let's go up to our first inversion now. Okay, so it's going to be 7th um, of the D, uh, 10 of the G, and then 8 of the high E. And that was with my pointer, pinky, and then middle. Okay, and the root note for that is on the G. So it's basically the middle of the three notes. Okay, so there is the first inversion. And now let's go up to our um, second inversion now. This is going to be uh, 10 of the D, 14 of the G, 13 of the high E, and that's with my pointer, pinky, and then ring. Okay, and that's our second inversion, um, F major triad. And then the root note for that is the highest note in the chord. So if you need to move those to other chords. Um, so again, really slowly, root, first, second, First, and then we have our root position there. Okay, now what's great about this is that now if we want to move it to, for instance, having the lowest note on the A, 
all the shapes are exactly the same. So now from C, just move up, uh, first inversion shape is exactly the same, same for second. So all our shapes stay exactly the same, which again is, is awesome. Um, okay, now to move these to the, uh, with the lowest note being on the low E, okay, now we're going to be going, again, just to stay on that third fret area, okay, now we're in G major, okay, again, this is still going to apply, so all of these inversion shapes that we just did, whatever the highest note is, we're just going to move that one fret towards the headstock of the guitar, okay, so starting with our first shape that we already know, now the next inversion shape is right here, now the highest note, we're just going to move it down one fret. Now this might be a little bit of a stretch for some people, so you can, if you want to, just do a bar with the pointer finger. But the shape, first of all, is 7 on the low E, and then we're going to have 10 on the A, 7 on the G. Okay. Now here's, again, with my method, I like to keep all these shapes exactly the same, so again the two adjacent strings, skip string, and then a note on the next string. But you can move the notes around if the need be. So for instance, this G right here, we could move it to the G right here on the D string, and we have the exact same chord. Okay, so exact same chord. That might be easier for you guys. Again, um, you know, a lot of guys could tell me, like, you know, I should just use this shape because it's easier to get to, easier to grab. But for me, it's all about kind of how quickly I can visualize and use this stuff, how quickly I can get there in a musical situation. Um, and for me, just keeping the same exact two skip string one idea is just easier for me to visualize, especially when I'm playing, you know, quick progressions and stuff like that. So this is up to you guys. Um, do whatever works best for you. Uh, this is just what works for me. So um, going up to the last shape um, on the next set of strings. So right here obviously was our second version C. Okay, now let's move that down to the lowest note on the low E. Now the highest note, we're going to move down one fret. So now we're going to have 10 low E, 14 A, 12 of the G. And that is going to be with our pointer, pinky, and then middle. Okay, and that is our second inversion, uh, second version G major shape there. Okay, really nice sound of that. Um, and these are really nice because they sound great, especially like on um, with your lowest note being on the low E, they still sound really nice and really, really clear. So um, I love that about these shapes. But anyways, let's take a look now at our, uh, our minor shapes and our minor inversions. All right, so obviously we already took a look at our um, just root position inversions. Now, um, as, as you guys should remember from the previous lessons, wherever our third is in any of these shapes, we're just going to move it towards the headstock one fret, so we'll make it a minor third. So wherever our major third is, it's going to become our minor third. Um, so starting in F, so here's our root position. Here's our first inversion of major. The third is the lowest note in this one, so that goes one fret down. Okay, moving up to our second inversion. Our third is our middle note, so that's going to go one fret down as well. Okay, and then um, that is all our inversions of F minor. Now again, same exact thing when our lowest note is on the A. So when we move to C minor, okay, so all the inversion shapes will stay exactly the same. And then again, we move to the G minor, the highest note in all the chords is just going to go down one fret. So here's our first. Okay, here's our, our or excuse me, here's our root position. Here's our first inversion. Again, you can do the same thing with the G. You can move it to the D string. You get a smaller stretch. Okay, and then um, so we just moved our minor third down. We were right here. I'm just going to move it down one. And then coming up here, our second version, moving that minor third, or that major third down one again to get our minor third. So nice and slow. There's root, first, second, first, root. Okay, so there is our, uh, our minors. 
Um, now for these, like in the other ones, as you guys remember, we have been taking a look at, um, you know, adding different color tones in, all that good stuff. Uh, these open triads are a little bit more tricky to add some of these in because a lot of times, um, to add color tones in, a lot of times they turn into a little bit bigger of a stretch. Um, and they can get a little bit awkward sometimes, but not, not too bad. Um, some shapes are pretty unreachable though, so you just kind of have to go through and, and find, you know, cool, this works for me, this doesn't work at all for me, um, and just kind of, you know, figure out where, um, where the problem areas are going to be for you and, you know, maybe the shapes you want to avoid. So we're going to go through this really, really quick. Um, just kind of some basic ideas because everything that we had already talked about will still apply from the previous lesson. So like where the relation of like the two is, is always still going to be, um, you know, two frets uh, below the third or two frets above the root. So that's still going to apply. So go back, um, go through all these chords, find those tones where they work. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple. Um, but if you if you hadn't checked out the previous lessons, go back, check out the two lessons before this one, um, and I go through like really in depth where all the where all your color tones are going to be. Um, but just for time's sake, I won't go through all of them on this lesson. But yeah, if you haven't checked it out, go back, write uh, write down where all those are at, um, and it should be really helpful. So, anyways, the second is pretty nice to add on all of the root position chords. So it's always just going to be two below our third. Okay? Or we can also go two above the root, which can make for a really nice sound. Um, these also sound really nice when you suspend them. So, you know, with adding the fourth in, one fret above the third. So just a classic kind of suspended sound. Um, and then you can also get a really nice sound if you add the fourth and two frets below the fifth. Okay, so that sounds really nice as well. Um, you know, you can add the seventh and one fret below the root. Okay, which sounds better if you're in an inversion. Series first inversion, adding the seventh in. But then we just end up with an A minor triad, which over an F bass note makes more sense. So we'd have this. Sounds really, really good. So this is kind of coming back to the idea of playing triads over bass notes, um, which again is a little bit beyond the scope of these lessons. But we can add that seventh in and it'll sound really, really good. Um, a couple more ideas, you know, that you could that you could just try adding in is even just um, you know, like adding in, uh, you know, an extra string if you wanted to. Okay, so say we were playing like this C major right here. You could just try adding like, if you know that the G is in the chord, this high G in, um, or you could e try adding like the A in, the A note, or maybe even the B, the major seventh. So then you have a four part harmony. And again, you don't really need to know all the theory, you know, the theory behind all that stuff. Just experiment, try adding a couple other notes and see what kind of sounds you can come up with. Um, going back to minor chords though really quick, the minor triads. Again, you know, all this stuff is still going to work. So um, as far as like where the tones are, so second can still be one below the minor third. You know, or the fourth is still going to be two above the uh, minor third. So all that stuff is still going to be exactly the same. Um, again, from the last lesson. So, like I said, if you haven't checked that out, um, give uh, give those a quick watch. Um, and then just go through these because again, like I said, I have a fairly big grip so I can reach a lot of these that might be pretty awkward for some guys and might even be unusable for them. So just go through these, um, you know, see where, where, uh, where shapes are going to work, where they're not like we were talking about. Um, you know, just see what kind of ideas you can come up with on these 
and uh, you know just kind of go from there see what works you know a lot of times more often than not I find myself just playing the standard triad shapes and maybe adding in uh, the fourth or the second you know normally the second to major chords the fourth to minor chords um, just to avoid like really awkward stretches and stuff because I think honestly these already sound awesome just the standard triad forms because of this extra space that's in the chord already so I think you know just the standard triads already sound really really nice um, so yeah you know ex but it, again totally up to you guys experiment with what you want you know what kind of sounds you want what works what doesn't work for your for your grip and for your reach um, kinda go from there with these ideas so yeah, let's go on to a couple musical examples now, starting to make some music with these, taking them through some progressions, um, and uh, yeah, just start making a little music with them. Alright, so the first thing that I want to mention to you guys uh, with making music with these open triads is just try to add in some open strings. Um, it can be randomly, you can know the, you know the theory behind what you're doing, but um, just experiment with adding in some open strings and see what happens. So let's say like we're in G for a second here. So I'm going to play um, this G just in reposition, but add in the open uh, G string. Okay, now I'm going to go to F, keep the open G string ringing out. Now I'm also going to let the high E ring out because that's the major seventh. Really pretty. Down to an E minor in reposition letting the G and the high E ring out again, down to D major, reposition. Same idea. Okay, now I'm going to play um, like a sus2 shape, so I'm going to replace a third with a second. Which is really, really pretty. I'm going to keep the same idea and just move it down to B flat. Okay, absolutely beautiful sound. Now I'm going to go to an A minor. Now I'm on the low E is my lowest note. And now I'm letting the B and the high E ring out. And then I'm going to go to a G major to finish off with and let the D and the B ring out. Okay, so really pretty sounds. Um, let's try just a really quick progression now in E major. And now I'm going to keep my shapes on the high uh, the high four side of string, so my lowest note is going to be on the D. Okay, so there's my first shape, and I'm letting just the B string ring open for all of these. Okay, and I'll keep them in root position just for simplicity's sake. Okay, now I'm going to go to G sharp minor. That ringing string, the B, becomes our third. Now I'm at A. Now it is our second. Now I'm at B and it's our root note. Now I'm at C sharp minor, it's our seventh. Our minor seventh. Now I'm at uh, E major again and it is our fifth. Okay, so really slow. E, G sharp, A, B, C sharp minor. Okay, so really pretty sounds there. Um, so yeah, you can you can experiment with that. Just see what kind of sounds you can come up with. Just letting some of the open strings ring out. Again, you don't always have to know uh, you know the theory behind everything you're doing. Just experiment. If it sounds bad, you know, move to another shape. If it sounds good, awesome. Uh, maybe save that in your uh, repertoire. And don't forget that you can also capo all these shapes. So just because you find like an awesome shape that works for a G you know, and you want to use another key, just don't forget about capoing these shapes as well, because um, that's really useful, especially if you find like a progression that you think sounds awesome, um, and maybe you want to throw it into um, a tune you're working on or something like that. And again, these shapes, you know, sound great when you use them in gospel, but they sound great in almost anything, you know, classical progressions, pop progressions, you can even use these with pretty hard rock stuff because there's still a fifth, in the lowest, between the lowest, the root note, and then the next note. So they still work really well with uh, distortion as well. So they stay nice and clean and clear. But it's just adding a little more harmony, getting that third in there. So that's awesome. Um, so yeah, again, experiment with adding some open strings in. See what kind of sounds you can come up with. Uh, maybe some songs based around the idea. 
Um, and now let's take a look at adding um, just the inversions in and playing a couple really simple progressions just with inversions now. All right, guys. So let's um, let's go to G major just to keep things simple for right now. Um, so again, one one sharp in G major, just F sharp. Rest our natural notes. So we're gonna just do this on the high four set of strings for once again just for simplicity for right now. Okay, so we'll start just with a root position G major. Okay, then we're gonna uh, gonna go to C major. And now something that's really good to practice is practice voice leading um, any progression you might know. Now, a really basic description uh, or you know um, explanation of voice leading is just keeping all the tones moving as little as possible from chord to chord. So the smallest amount of movement when you move from chord to chord. So for instance, right here, I'm gonna go G to C. Instead of going all the way up here, I have a C in second inversion right here, which is obviously really, really close. The G note doesn't even change. So that's kind of a common tone between the two chords. So G, C, now I'm going to go to E minor, and again, only one note is going to change on this one. Okay, I'm going to first inversion minor shape, E minor. Okay, so there's our first inversion E minor, so we got G, C, E minor. Now I'm going to go um, to A minor, okay, in first or root position, and then uh, D major in second inversion. Okay, so we had G, C, E minor, A minor, D major, G major. And again, we're going to end up here at first inversion too. All those are pretty close together. Uh, so that's, that's one idea. You know, you can take this through some gospel regressions. Again, for right now, I'm just trying to keep it simple. I don't want to confuse you guys with anything too, you know, too crazy for progressions. Just playing some really standard pop progressions just for simplicity's sake for right now because um, this stuff can get pretty mind-boggling you know if you don't take it slow when you first start out with it uh, so anyways that's kind of the first idea you know um, that'll kind of get you guys going just looking for those inversions looking for the closest ways to play them you don't always have to do that sometimes it's not even the most musical thing to do um, it's just something to practice so that it gets you using your inversions faster because you don't really have a choice if you want to voice lead everything um, really, really well. So that's something to watch out for. Again, some of these shapes, you might run into problems with them being a really big stretch, but just use that idea where we move one note to another string, and that usually solves all the problems. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the idea. You could do bigger jumps in these for sure, you know, maybe you could go, like if we add a bar of G major, you go 1, 2, 3, 4, then maybe 2, E minor, 1, 2, 3, 4. You know, doing bigger jumps, maybe to um, uh, D major, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now I obviously switched string sets on this one, then maybe back down to G major took that G major shape and went up a whole octave that time. Okay, so that's really cool. Don't forget about arpeggiating these. Um, also playing these as single notes, so that kind of thing. Just going through these really slow, the inversions. Now I'm going to switch strings. Okay, so you can also do that, maybe going to C major. Switching strings, you know, going across. Um, I think I had said at the beginning of the video, you know, Eric Johnson does that kind of thing a lot, or he'll actually use these in his soloing. Um, so yeah, that should give you guys, you know, enough ideas with this to go through, you know, be able to play over a lot of progressions and stuff. Then, after you've got these down, start adding them in with your closed um, triad. So maybe for G, play a root closed. Then go up to um, first inversion open. And let's say we're going to C, um, root position open. And then maybe to closed. 
So you could, you know, you could do all sorts of ideas with this, and then maybe E minor, second inversion closed, and then maybe root position open all the way up here. You know, just experiment. Um, big jumps always, like, also I should say, aren't always a bad thing. Sometimes they sound really, really musical, so don't be afraid to do big jumps on the fretboard between inversions. Sometimes it can lead to a great sound. And last thing I want to mention, um, is that try to use all these, try to play an entire solo just using closed triads and open triads. Um, so really, really slow just to get the idea. So let's just say just G major. So here's close, open, okay, open, again, okay, now close, okay, closed, closed, open, open triads there. Try to do a whole solo just based off of triads. It's really, really difficult and you'll want to go back to your box shapes a lot and it can be really frustrating, but it's well worth it because then you're visualizing actual chord shapes and the tones of the chords instead of just a whole bunch of boxes across the fretboard. So that's really, really usable. Um, so yeah, I think we should have covered most of the ideas with these open triads. Again, I love these, they're really useful and they sound absolutely killer. They'll take some work for sure, but as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's less shapes, um, so they're easier to kind of get a mastery over, besides some of the bigger stretches obviously. But that is the idea, um, and I should mention also that next week is going to be our last uh, gospel lesson. Next week we're going to be going over some progressions, some popular gospel chord progressions, um, covering those and get you guys playing obviously some music with these over some popular gospel progressions. So we're going to kind of use everything that we've been building up to so far. So we're going to make use of you know our, our two note voicings, um, some of our bigger jazz kind of voicings, um, these triads, open, close, um, and just go over some gospel progressions to get you guys started and then from there uh, the sky's the limit with all this stuff. So yeah, anyways, um, I should mention too, if you guys have uh, any ideas that you'd really like to be covered for the next series of lessons, um, I'm not really positive what I'm going to be starting on yet. I got a couple ideas in the works, but let me know what you guys want to see and we can figure something out from there. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I will see you guys back here again next week. Thanks so much.